Hello everyone, and thank you for being here. I'm Emmanuel, a backend engineer at uh, Le Kiosk. And I'm here uh, today to speak to you about my project called Pistechix, which entitles as a type safe design first hacks web API framework. So the project is uh, hosted on GitHub and also have a website and you can uh, reach me on this email or on uh, GitHub if you, if you need. So a uh, little disclaimer before I start. Uh, Pistechix is uh, still work in progress and also is an open source project, so everybody is welcome on the project if, uh, if they want. Uh, let's start with a little background about me. I started coding uh, at the age of 15 when I got my hand on this uh, magnificent computer which you can use with uh, magnetic tapes. So you insert the tape on the player and you play the tape and you wait until all the data gets on the computer and then you can play your game. This was my first uh, start with uh, computing. And a uh, small uh, time later, my uncle offered me this nice computer, portable computer, black and white. So it was really, really nice. I was uh, thrilled to discover all the stuff like Windows, bad scripts, games, and later on game dev. And that was it. Coding became my true passion. And after that, uh, many, many years later, after working uh, many years in the IT field, approaching uh, different kind of businesses and uh, problematics, technologies, languages, challenges, I eventually came across the hacks language and toolkit only a few months ago. <laughs> And since then, I've been uh, addicted to this language and technology, which I find very, very cool. So nowadays, I'm working at a company called Lukiosk, and we already use hacks in production for various uh, problems and challenges. For example, we use it for uh, writing uh, portable JavaScript libraries, which we embed in mobile apps. We also use hacks to design uh, data pipeline workers, which we ship in Docker containers and we deploy them in the cloud after that. And we also use it to write some desktop tools using uh, Electron packaging, which is a part of the Node.js uh, ecosystem and helps you uh, get your app, your Node.js app to the desktop and also for writing admin interfaces and brand new IP APIs for uh, our future projects. And this is uh, why uh, I started the project uh, Pistachix. So now let's dig in the project itself. Uh, first of all, I want to speak about uh, some common, really common problematics uh, people have with uh, developing ap APIs, especially when they start to work on legacy APIs. Legacy APIs are um, often old and uh, slow and developed with uh, old code and development, development tools. And uh, it implies uh, heavy, def uh, heavy costs due to technology stickiness, uh, for example, licenses to, to get and infrastructures. You are often uh, stuck with this uh, old technology and you want to go further. Often they, these uh, legacy ap APIs don't have uh, any documentation or specification, so it's really hard to start on. And also they have some performance issues, uh, often related to bad uh, caching strategies or no caching strategy at all, so this is really bad. And we also have some uh, really common predictability, scalability, scalability and deployability issues. So this is all uh, really not fun. So maybe we can imagine something better for our, our new API project. Now, Pistechix is uh, an effort to solve all these issues by helping you and your development team to uh, code, deploy, and scale type-safe uh, design-first hacks web APIs. 
So, Pistechix, of course, the name uh, refers to the core of the technology with, which is hex-based. Uh, so developers can uh, continue to write uh, type-safe uh, business classes and stay, uh, uh, the code stays clean and uh, safe. And for now, uh, Pistechix projects only target the Node.js uh, target. <coughs> In the future, maybe we will open uh, other targets, but for now, uh, Node.js seems a good choice because the ecosystem of Node.js is really, really um, big and uh, it can be deployed on almost any environment on any stack. Pistachix, you also use um, as, um, a, in the core, uh, use uh, Redis as a ultra fast uh, cache store and implements multiple layers of caching within the, the framework. It also implements a, a specification called Open API, which formerly was called Swagger. Maybe some of you know it yet. Um, which it's a, a great specification for APIs. Just a little uh, round trip on the Open API initiative website, which I welcome you to discover. Uh, this is a consortium of, it's a groupment of um, a lot of uh, companies to help uh, developers uh, write and design their APIs uh, in a, a, cool fashion, a cool way. We will discover how just a bit later. And, sorry, Pistachix is based on many models which uh, interact together to generate your API from your design. So we will see how. And here you see that there are some modules, for example, Pistachix spec, which will help you generate hacks type devs from your specification. Uh, it can also automatically scaffold all the, all the boiler plates for your routes and also generate type safe mappers between your schema, your DB, and your API what object uh, you want to spread out to the world. And we also offer some Docker containers within the modules of Pistachix, so you can deploy, uh, run, but also build your API, uh, leaving your local environment completely clean. So now let's see some details. Here is a view of a it's a partial view of uh, Pistachix ecosystem for now. So it's of course based on Hex, Hex, sorry, Hex. Uh, it, uh, it targets the Node.js environment, implements OpenAPI uh, specification, uses Redis as a fast cache store. Uh, SQLize, I don't know if some people know it yet, it's an ORM, it's a DB uh, interface. Uh, multi DB, so it can connect to uh, MS SQL, for example, if you your DB is on a Microsoft server, or uh, SQL it if you develop a small uh, application, or any other DB. Uh, you also see that uh, Pistachix implements uh, Mustache. This is a little Mustache logo, which is a templating engine, and here you have the ELK, ELK stack which is uh, greatly renowned uh, nowadays. And some other uh, uh, parts are Passport, which comes from the Node.js uh, environment, uh, which will help you handle all authentication on security around your API. And you also see that we have Docker in it. So as I said, to help you uh, get your app in containers and deploy it everywhere. So let's see how to start fresh and bootstrap a new API using uh, Pistachix app, which is a demo application hosted on GitHub. So everybody can easily uh, try the project uh, in, in minutes. So I will try to demonstrate that it's not so long. So here I have my command line, sorry. I will just clone the repository of Pistachix app done. 
Now you have a little command that will install, for example, gulp, which is a task runner. So this prepare sh will install some some stuff before we can uh, actually um, build the project. We'll just wait some some time. And after this, you see that there is a gulp command, which will um, provide uh, a little menu on which you can select uh, what you want to do with the um, later. Okay. Okay, so, so now the solution is prepared. I will type gulp. Sorry. Here we can see the menu. So you have a run task. The run task can be run before you build your app. So I will first build the app. So this part will be a bit long because it has to get all the dependencies of the project. For example, all the node modules used in the application. Um, so this is what happens here, what the part we, we can see here. And after this, there are a lot of things that happen uh, for building, building your application, but you control uh, what happens because the gulp file is included in pistachix app. So you can, for example, here you can see that we pull a companion website. The idea is, for example, to uh, keep your, your website. Of course, it needs to be a single page web website, so it doesn't require some, some other uh, backend technology. But if it's a single page web, web, uh, web uh, site, you can imagine to pull it with your API and deploy it in the same containers, for example. But also you can deactivate this part in, in your Gulp file so it doesn't happen. And some other things are happening. I'm not uh, detailing it uh, now. You see here that I'm using uh, hacks JS kit from Clemos, which I forked because I just had to fix something and I'll make the PR uh, soon. And now the app has been pre-built. We can just uh, gulp run. So there are many, many things that happens also here. I will explain later. And now the app is built and running on port 3000. So let's just try. So. This is not really your API. Your API. This is uh, an automatic documentation that has been generated by uh, your specification. But what we can see here is uh, that there are some routes that have been published. And uh, this documentation is interactive, so you can try out your routes. This is the get employees, for example, route. And you see that the documentation is interactive because you have a try it out button, which will call really your, your deployed API, the API that's running on the, on the host, and render the result on the response body. So this is a, a very uh, cool way to test your application. Even before that the logic, the business logic is written, you can get this documentation and provide it to your customers, for example. So now back to the project. Let's just have a look at the project stru structure after cloning uh, the demo application Pistachix app. So let's go on GitHub. Okay, there are a lot of files on the root folder, but uh, it's only to help you deploying and developing your project. You have, for example, the Gulp file that I mentioned earlier. But besides this, you only have an app folder, and when we go in the app folder, you will see it's really compact. You have a YAML file. This is the specification of your API. I will show you what's in it. After this, you have your configurations. You can see that the configuration is also YAML-based. YAML is a language, I, we will see. And each environment you target, will be, sorry, each environment uh, that you target will be uh, configured in a file like this. This is a local, my local uh, configuration in local YAM file. 
And besides this, you have a business, sorry, a business uh, folder where you will have your hex code containing your business logic. So, yeah. This demo app you saw, um, if we open the package.json file, you will see that the app depends on, on uh, PSTHX and uh, PSTHX modules. I show you this because uh, I need to tell you that PSTHX uh, is and will stay a dependency of your project. It's an open source project, but your app is independent uh, of it and it just use it as a dependency in your project. So this is why the application itself is really, really uh, compact and will stay compact. All your business code will, will stay here and there is uh, no link between uh, the technology and your app. Uh, of course, uh, the technology will run your app, but uh, there is no uh, leaks. So here is a, a view of the development workflow with uh, PSTHX. There, is, there are uh, three parts. First, you will configure your uh, API environment. As I showed you, it's on the app conf and uh, the name of the environment.yaml files. Then you will design your, your API. We will see just after what's the meaning of designing an API. It's just specifying uh, how you, your API will answer some hits and how will, it will respond. And the third uh, step is to implement your business code. And of course, it's done in the Hacks language. Sorry. So I told you PSTHX implements uh, the open API uh, specification, which was formerly called Swagger. It's a strong and renowned specification for REST API standardizations. And there are many, many tools available on the, on the net to use this technology. For example, you have um, a neat editor, online editor, called uh, Swagger Editor. You have plenty of samples on this website, so you can have a look uh, on what's, how, how it works. But basically, this editor, editor.swagger.io, is just a two-part screen. On the left-hand side, you have your specification of API. So for example, here, we can see that the, this API um, provides a, a get pets root, which we can find just here. This is a, a link between the two. It's automatically synced. And we can see that the get pets roots is here. And all the information about the roots are rendered in a UI uh, fashion way. But the information is also here, present here. For example, uh, the description of, the, of this root uh, and the, all the parameters and the response uh, format are described in this uh, specific language, which is YAML. And this is the starting po point of designing your API. Uh, it will consist of writing some YAML code, as we see here. And the resulting will be uh, a nice documentation, interactive documentation, as you see here. So I show you editor.swagger.io, which is a small editor you can use for your work. And the Swagger UI is actually what you can see just here. And you notice that I embedded the interactive documentation uh, while deploying my application. So what you see here is uh, the port uh, 3000 serves my documentation, but also, of course, can serve Sorry, uh, api.v1.employees. It also can respond to direct hits. So this is the Swagger UI. Now back to PSTHX. Here is a sample of a local uh, configuration file. It's a simple uh, key value file on which you can define some keys for example, I don't know uh, the environment name. Okay, it's not very interesting. But the Redis, I told you that Redis is an important part of the technology. 
Uh, I choose Redis because it's ultra fast and ultra neat, but maybe later we will integrate some other uh, cache store, I don't know. For now it's Redis, it's fixed to Redis. And what we can see just down there, it's uh, some deactivated keys. So the idea be behind this is to be able to activate or deactivate some functionalities for your application by just commenting or decommenting some keys in the configuration file. So now, now let's uh, have a look at the specification itself, which uh, I say it again is the starting point of your development. What we are looking here is uh, a, just a part of the api.yam file, which will be able to provide interactive doc and, and so on. So what we see here is uh, that in the yam file, we can not only define some routes, but we can also define some models. Uh, it's meaning that the documentation, for example, but also your code, will know uh, which type of objects it can render to the outside world. So here, here is an employee model defined in the specification of my API, which have some fields, for example, ID field, last name field, first name field, and you see that we can define some types for these fields, okay. Nothing fancy. Another definition is the employees definition, which is simply an array of employees, of employee, sorry. And here we can see that we define a root get employees uh, that uh, is bent to a definition which is employees. So this means, sorry. This means the get employees root will render uh, objects of type employees. And what I didn't show you is uh, this special key called operation ID. So the whole idea of Pistachix is to being able to design your API and bootstrap automatically all your boilerplate code. So what, what I call boilerplate code uh, code uh, in this uh, type of uh, situation is, for example, uh, the roots. What you can see here is um, a get ample, oops, sorry, no, I, I, I'm, I made a mistake. Uh, we will see just later how Pistachix bootstrap all the roots, but here is a business uh, code, a part of my business code. I just want to show you that this get employees root will call later, we will see how, this uh, method, this hacks method. And what's interesting here is, uh, oh, th this part of the code is uh, from uh, SQLize, the ORM to the database, so you can uh, know that, uh, you can see that uh, we call a find all method on uh, a model with a limit of five, and then we do something with the result, okay. But the interesting part is the typing uh, part, we can see that this method will uh, respond a promise of array of, of uh, employee. And we can also see uh, just uh, after that there is a DB employee uh, model which is here, and I render it in red because these two parts are, have been auto-generated by your specification. So let's see how. There is a model in Pistachix uh, which is called Pistachix spec. So it's a hacks uh, project uh, used to generate hacks code from your API, uh, YAML file. So his, here is a, a sample of how you call it. Uh, you have uh, many types of use with this uh, little tool. So for example, <coughs> if you <coughs> input the type roots and input your YAML file and output to a specific hacks file, it will generate it. Uh, and uh, this file will contain all express uh, style, because I'm in Node.js, express style roots definitions, as this one. This has been auto-generated by, by Pistache spec, so we can see that this is uh, express syntax in hacks. So you see that your API will answer to get uh, hit on this uh, employee's uh, root and that we, it will call the get employees method that we just saw before. 
Again, this file has been auto-generated. You only have to write your specification and your business logic after this. Here is another uh, example of how, what you can do with PSTHX spec by using the type equal type def uh, input. It will generate this time a td.hx file, sorry, which can contain more than one thing. Uh, actually, it will contain uh, model type defs from your spec. That's what we saw just before. Um, for example, this. This has been designed in your uh, spec, and the tool we saw will generate, automatically generate uh, hacks type defs from this specification. And a thing we, we will see just later is also uh, you can auto-generate some mappers between your uh, API models and your DB models. And it's all defined in the spec. We will see how just after. Here is an example uh, related to what I showed you uh, in the YAML file, where we defined it two models, the employees model, which is an array of employee, and the employee model. So this file, again, has been auto-generated by PSTHX spec based on your spec, and we have two type defs, uh, simple, a list of employee and the employee type def. Okay, so now for mappers. When you have um, a new project, sometimes you work with uh, legacy uh, DB, and it's uh, sometimes very, very hard to get your data somewhere else, so you have to stay with the, the legacy DB, uh, which is uh, sometimes bad, badly designed, uh, bad names, uh, the fields are not uh, what you want to, them to do, to be. So in the api.yaml file, <coughs> Uh, on the models, uh, on the definition of the models uh, part, you can use some keys, which are, I rendered in red. That will help you bind your API models to your DB models. So what you can see here is a xdto model key, uh, which uh, refers to the name of the table in your database. It could be anything else, sorry. It could be anything else than uh, employee, it's just a name of the table you will target in your DB. So for example, uh, the XDTO model uh, uh, name should, could be different than the employee in green uh, model. And the same applies to fields. For example, your a API will serve an ID for uh, employee, but your old DB doesn't uh, have this field uh, called this way uh, it's called employee ID. So here is a very, very simple example on which you can see that you can map easily uh, two fields name that doesn't match. And here is the result, again, auto-generated by PSTHX spec. So it's a mapper which uh, implements a method which will map from your DB model to your API model. You can see that it gets a DB employee type, again auto-generated, we will see later, from your DB, and it renders an employee uh, type. And here you can have a view of, uh, of the mapping I told you with two fields with uh, different names. The last part is uh, when you are work working with uh, a DB, is you might want to auto-generate uh, hacks definitions for these uh, DB models. So there is a third uh, part uh, with the use of a model called PSTHX DB. Uh, this tool is a work in progress. Uh, actually, it, it's, it's a work, uh, I'm trying to refactor it because uh, <coughs> it's still actually a JS uh, tool for now. And I would like to rewrite it to hacks. It will be better. But uh, for now, it can still uh, do some stuff. It can render some, uh, it can auto-generate some uh, HX files from your DB, which will contain, uh, for example, this, which is a representation of your DB 
in hex language. So this is the model we saw earlier, and you can see all the fields uh, from the DB. So, now I presented the uh, Pistetix uh, core and models. We are back to Gulp, so I told you there are many, many uh, possibilities with Gulp. Um, here I present some of the simple commands I, uh, I, I added to the project. You have a build command, which will install all dependencies needed to build the project. Maybe build is not the, Gulp build is maybe not the best name, but I may refactor it uh, later. But it, it, it installs all the dependencies needed uh, to build the project. And then you have a Gulp run task that will, uh, that will transpile your, your uh, spec and business code to the target uh, language we are aiming. And the Gulp pack is pretty much like the Gulp run uh, task. Uh, only it will not uh, run, start your API uh, after this. So you can see here that the API is running. If, I, if ever I used uh, the pack method, it will do the same, but not launch the API uh, afterwards. So, I told you that uh, Pistetix pack will do the same as Pistetix run, meaning that uh, when you did this, your API is ready to be run and to be deployed. Actually, the result uh, of the transpilation is uh, provided in a distrib out folder, and this folder can be taken, given to somebody else, deployed or whatever, it should run because it contains everything needed to, to run on a Node.js stack. So for example here, I'm using a, a little sample to show you. Um, maybe some of you know the Elastic Beanstalk technology, which is a, a deployment uh, stack on Amazon AWS. And you can see here with three lines that we can easily deploy our um, transpiled application to this cloud with these three commands. And of course, you have to set some keys, for example, environment vari variables on the cloud, so your application still knows which config file it should uh, use. And here is another example of um, the deployment part. We provide uh, a little container it's really, really uh, small because it's based on Alpine Linux. Maybe some of you know it. It's a small distribution of uh, Linux. Uh, so it helps you <coughs> spread your app easily on any cloud, any, any Docker-ready cloud. Uh, and Docker technology is a very, very, uh, it's a very cool technology that I <coughs> invite you to discover if you don't know it uh, yet, because it, um, it covers all the predictability, uh, deployability, and scalability uh, issues. So this is why I use it uh, now. Okay, here is uh, a small feature <coughs> between other, among others, in Pistachix. Uh I told you that Pistachix is a uh, heavily based on cache uh, to give you the power of uh, having a, a true fast API. So uh, by implementing cache, you have uh, some problematics, some issues to, to, to think about. And one of, uh, of these problematics is uh, cache invalidation. The meaning is uh, that you can uh, cache your data a long time uh, but you need to think about when the cache will be invalidated, uh, and especially when there are some updates on the DB, the cache needs to be flushed for the other people to get the refreshed data. So what I propose here, here is uh, a simple uh, way to do this within the YAM file. So here is an extract of, uh, sorry, here is an extract of the YAM file uh, uh, on the put root for an employee. This, this root will update an employee, okay? 
So you can define a key on the YAML file, which is called xcacheflush, which will uh, automatically uh, flush the cache for other routes when a route is called. So this means when modifying uh, an employee using the put method on your API, the employee's get root will be, the cache will be, will be flushed. So this is re really, really helpful. And of course what you can see is that it's an array, so I can define other routes. It's still work in progress, but it's, uh, it's a big part of, uh, of the technology. Okay, um, sorry, how, how many time I, I got? Yes. Five minutes, okay. So let's try to do a really, really quick sample. Uh, the bootstrap of the API is done. I already did it, so it should be fast. I just commented some parts of my code, so I will decomment now, and uh, we will see the result. So let's just run the API again. Of course, when you are in development mode, you will not uh, be in the command line, you, you will be in the, for example, Sublime, okay? And you have uh, a possibility to build your app with uh, command B, for example, if you are on Mac, uh, and you get all the, for example, all the code completion <coughs> on the, here, for example, employee, go to definition, we are back in the auto-generated file with your models, and so on and so on. Okay, so what I commented in the API are two new routes, which you can see here. It's a little small, sorry. It's an albums route and album. Uh, it's, I use a small local DB, uh, SQL DB, which uh, contains some albums, artists, and so and so uh, data. So I'm, use it, I'm using it for demo purpose. So first of all, I will pretend that I want to open two new routes on my API. And uh, I spoke to my mobile team and, okay, we, we have uh, agreed about a format of uh, parameters and so and so and response. So we decided to open these two, two routes, one of, each, one of which uh, is called get albums, which will get all the albums of the DB. And the other one is uh, get an album, one album, providing one album ID. The second part is to decommand the, def or to write, sorry, the definition of what's an album and what's an albums. So this is down on the definition part of the API <coughs> specification. I will uncommand this part. Again, albums is only an array of albums and album have some fields, <coughs> which are binded in this case to a DB model with the XDTO model key. And we can see another example of mapping between the DB field, album ID, and the ID, uh, the field I want uh, outside, ID. Okay, so saving this file, back to the business class. This is where you will actually implement your code. So let's uh, uncomment some code. Some parts are, I'm not so proud of some parts. There are still some untyped, untyped uh, code some, some places. So of course, uh, I will not say, stay the, I, may, I will not stay in this position. I will try to, to kill all the untypes and then dynamics in the code. But for now, it's still uh, in progress. And when you define the, your routes, you of course have to write some business code. So here we see two new methods that I just wrote. I was really fast. The get albums route, which will provide at the end a promise of array of album. And the get album that will provide a promise of album. Okay? And the syntax is pretty small in it. It uses uh, sequelize. Uh, syntax. So we are only finding all the albums on the limit of five, and we include the artist model. I will show you how. It's, it's an example of association. You can associate, of course, uh, in any ORM, uh, ORM 
uh, you can associate uh, your tables. So I'll do the same here to provide the artist name for each album. It's a simple test. And the same for, the, for one album. Uh, the only difference is that we provide <coughs> a parameter, which is the album ID to get the album. So now that I have uh, uncommented all the code, I think, if I'm not wrong, yeah, you saw that I just uh, touched two files, the IEPI.yam file and the business class. Okay, we did this. Define the album and artist definitions and routes. We did this. Okay, we did this too in the business file. And we also did this. <laughs> so now let's gulp run and see the result. API running again. So at first we only had uh, this employee uh, pack of routes, which had three routes. And if I start again, I see the new album category, which have two routes, which we defined earlier. And as I told you, it's an interactive doc, so you can right away try your API and see the result here. So this is an array of album with an artist name for each album representing the association of two models within the demo. And for example, let's pick one, uh, this ID 5, and I will try the get album with an album ID of 5, just to see if it's working. Yeah, working. So what you saw here is uh, a small round trip around what you can do with PCX by defining some specification for your API and uh, writing some some code around it. Sorry, I lost my. Where is that? Up, 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 up. Where is my presentation? Sorry, just lost it. Here is it. Ta -da. As you saw, <laughs> the doc now showed two new routes. That's what I said. So what's next? Uh, Pistachix is uh, still version zero dot something. So I'm trying to think uh, now uh, on a roadmap to V1. So ideas behind this uh, V1 would be to generate uh, type defs and uh, code for the complete open API spec. For now, it's not the case. I would like to implement a parser for the api.yaml file we just saw. This type of parsers exist in the TypeScript world for now. So I'm really interested in implementing it in, in, in a hacks language. Also, uh, I still have to refactor some modules so they have, uh, so they will be hex models. For now, some of them are, are just JS model, uh, JS models. Another idea would be to implement other targets for the project. For example, I don't know uh, Lua, Lua, or or anything else. Uh, as I told you, I would like to get rid of all the remaining uh, untyped and dynamic in the code. I'm pretty new to the hex language and community, so I'm still learning. And other ideas, for example, uh, generating uh, all the CRUD uh, uh, routes. Uh, for example, what, what you saw uh, on the demo, sorry, was that I still have to write uh, the specification on the business logic for, for example, employees. But maybe in some case, it's pretty obvious what you need to do. So maybe I will try to add um, an automatic crude generation from something. Another idea would be to generate the api.yarn file, but I'm not sure about uh, from where and from which data. That's an open question. 
And another idea, uh, but I'm not going to talk much about it now because it's really, really early uh, work in progress, but it's a big idea for, for me. It's a legacy API booster which would help you to, to, to put a proxy behind, uh, above uh, old and slow legacy APIs you, you own. And with uh, this proxy, which will be PSTX based, you would uh, be able to improve uh, the performance of the underlying API by defining good caching strategies. Maybe I will talk about it uh, another day. Thank you everyone and uh, welcome uh, all the newcomers on the project. And if you have some questions now, I'm ready to answer. Hello. No questions. Everything was clear, or maybe everything was unclear? <laughs> I don't know. When, when you generate the, the, the code, uh, if you modify it, you have something to update it, or it's just it, right, right? If you, if you gulp run again, it will, it will uh, transpile uh, again. It will overwrite the... Yeah, yeah. it will overwrite all auto-generated code and leave your business code uh, clean. Okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. You don't, ah, this is this was a, this is a really good question because when I first uh, encountered uh, the Swagger technology, I was really really uh, dubitative about uh, how they act because, for example, if you go on the Swagger editor that I showed you, you see that you can generate a server here. So this is uh, pretty much what I I started to do. But I didn't uh, generate uh, a Node.js server, but I implemented the hacks target for the same reason. Maybe someday I will, uh, I will propose my technology to this team, so they have a hacks target here. But actually they are not working uh, the same way I do. They use uh, a Java tool, which is pretty heavy to do this. So I. I split my technology from, from this uh, kind of uh, processing. And uh, to answer your question, when you generate this server, it will generate it from, from the API, but uh, it's not easy to code some business code in it and generate it again after. So this is uh, an important part of PCHX that you can generate and generate again without losing all your business code, of course. You don't lose anything. I was just going to mention the, uh, you had one of the things you wanted to do was to generate type deaths directly from the op open API spec. Yep. And I think, uh, I think the way to do that would be uh, definitely like with a macro or something. Um, Should be, yeah. To get you started, there's, uh, you want to look into, um, I know that there's a way to generate type deaths from JSON payloads, and it looks like uh, just looking real quickly through the open API payloads, nice. there's examples uh, that it will give back. And That's nice. so you can use those to basically, uh, there's two or three examples that have been put up on, on, uh, on GIST. So Thanks. try to dig those up and then maybe those will be useful. Will do, yeah, thank, thank you very much. Uh, just a, a little word about uh, JSON. Uh, I presented you uh, my API spec in the YAML format, but YAML and JSON are completely compatible. So yeah, it's a good idea, thanks. Uh, um, maybe it's a silly suggestion, but uh, did you uh, think about um, macro to uh, to generate the code so you don't have to run gulp? Uh, because I'm not very fond of gulp. Uh, if you just uh, regenerate all the the API uh, on compilation time, uh, I don't know if it's possible. I don't know mm. if you're yeah. thinking about. It. Actually, what do you think about? It? Yeah, actually, I'm still uh, a bit new to. The technology, as I said, so for example, uh, the workshop yesterday on the macros was uh, pretty interesting for me. Uh, 
<laughs> because I learned a lot of things. And I still did not discovered all the pieces of, uh, of hacks language and technology. So, um, of course, macro will, uh, will be one of my concerns uh, just yeah, in the future. Thank you, Len. Pardon? You're looking for contributors. Uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody is welcome on the project. You have uh, the GitHub project. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks.